We are also on the scene at this hour in New York City where these words are raising serious concerns about just what happens next. 72 hours until all hell breaks loose. Those words posted by former President Donald Trump as we are now just three days away from the beginning of his hush money trial in New York City. Money is allegedly paid to a porn star to avoid an incident that could have derailed the 2016 presidential campaign. Trump will become the first former U.S. president to stand trial. Gerard Felitti is a senior counsel at the Lawfare Project. And, and Gerard, that warning, 72 hours before all hell breaks loose. And, and then listen to this. These cases are all rigged. It sounds fair, doesn't it, to be gagged, but it's not. It virtually never happens. It only happens to me because I'm able to tell people what's happening, and those people get extremely angry with what's happening. Those people getting extremely angry at what is happening. How concerned are you that 72 hours until all hell breaks loose sounds a lot like come to Washington, D.C.? It will be wild. It, it certainly sounds that way, but unfortunately, we've gotten used to hearing language like this from President Trump. Uh, and I think that what we've seen with the indictments that he's had so far, with the arraignments that brought him into courtrooms, we have not seen the chaos that perhaps some people were pushing for or hoping would happen, and that things have been orderly and controlled. So Donald Trump, despite his rhetoric, I don't think is getting people to show up in New York City like, uh, like they did on January 6th in Washington, D.C., and I do expect that NYPD will have a firm handle uh, on anyone who does show up. Gerard, we are 72 hours now before trial. Uh, do you think this case is going to go to trial on Monday? I think we will definitely see the start of the jury selection process on Monday. It will be a while until that plays out, so we will not see actual testimony for for probably a couple of weeks, uh, given how long jury selection may take, that Donald Trump is objecting and, and trying to show as many obstacles to delay the case as possible. Uh, but we will see some proceedings start to take place on Monday, yes. There have been long-standing debates, as you know, about whether this is the best case to be the first case that, that is tried. But the bottom line is, a former president of the United States is set to go on trial Speak, if you will, to the historical significance at this of this moment from a legal standpoint. From a legal standpoint, this is unprecedented. We have not had this in American history, and we have had plenty of presidents who have been accused of impropriety in and out of office. To, to have this happen now in 2024, when we are seeing increasing division in America along political lines, really speaks to the need for the Justice Department and the justice system to play its role in keeping honor and integrity in what people actually do uh, and prosecute potential offenses. So this is really a significant milestone in American history where we are seeing for the first time a former president brought to trial for alleged illegalities uh, and this is a way of saying that we are a nation of laws and that no one is above or exempt from the law. Gerard, uh, twofold question for you. First of all, do you think that Donald Trump, if convicted, Alvin Bragg will seek jail time? That, that's a tough question to answer. I think that the political motivations may ask for some sort of remand or incarceration, but I genuinely doubt that would happen. I think that you will see more division and more potential for violence if Donald Trump is incarcerated. And the other part of it is that incarceration is meant to punish and deter. And it's also meant as a consequence for past conduct and to prevent future wrongdoing to some extent. Donald Trump is not necessarily a risk for engaging in more conduct if he is, is secluded in some sort of a house arrest, uh, as has been speculated by some. So this really is, uh, we're, we're, we're walking on eggshells in some ways because we have never had a situation where a very high profile individual who is still running for president and has a chance of winning the presidency might actually be convicted of a crime before that happens. Incarceration, probably not. But we don't know exactly what the evidence will be, how bad the case will turn for or against Donald Trump, uh, and what happens next. It's certainly a possibility, but unlikely. We are seeing the former president's words, 72 hours until all hell breaks loose. So that being said, if the ultimate goal in crime and punishment is to punish someone for their misdeeds, um, which would possibly include sending the former president to, to jail, why is there such a hesitance on putting him in jail as legal experts say, he continues to violate the rules of the gag order. And one of the conditions of the gag order in violating that gag order is sending him to jail. 
Well, so the, the, the issue that people have, I think, a difficulty balancing is the First Amendment and the fact that he is running for office. Uh, so this is an issue that's broader than just his case and what he is accused of doing and his views on whether he's being treated unfairly. He is making this a broader issue in terms of politics, and that's where you start to have First Amendment issues. How much can you restrain speech when you're running for office? How much can you restrain speech when this is a matter of great public concern beyond the application of the justice system and beyond keeping the integrity of the justice system. Again, this is kind of unchartered. We haven't had someone that is a high-profile presidential candidate potentially violating a gag order. So incarceration here would also set up appeals and trigger a lot of people, and there's a fine balancing act between imposing some measure of consequence for his behavior and actually incarcerating him. Gerard, as you know, as someone who has dealt with the First Amendment his entire life, the First Amendment does not allow you to go into a crowded theater and scream fire. So I guess my question to you would be, does the First Amendment allow, Amendment allow a politician to go into a crowded theater and yell fire? It does not allow a politician more than anyone else to yell fire, but then we have to dissect what exactly it is that he's saying. And saying that all hell breaks loose is different than saying I want all hell to break loose or I am directing all hell to break loose or this is specifically what I expect people to do. For example, march on the courthouse and take it over. So there, there's a difference in context, but a very important one, because as we've seen in the last six months in America with pro-Hamas demonstrations as well, there's a lot that the free, freedom of speech protects. even things that may be offensive and may be thought of as being violent. So there's a lot of care that needs to be put into analyzing exactly each statement that is made, whether or not that potentially is actionable or whether it is, regrettably or not, protected by the First Amendment. Gerard, stand by, because we've got Keith Taylor right now uh, with us uh, to talk about the law and order issue and specifically the concerns in New York City. We've been talking so far this morning about uh, 72 hours until all hell breaks loose, those words posted. On, on the former president's website. Your thoughts on whether or not 72 hours until all hell breaks loose is the same thing as saying, come to D.C., it will be wild. Uh, thank you for inviting me. You know, the NYPD and New York City in, in general, they're used to dealing with all kinds of uh, planned uh, venues, planned uh, individuals, uh, heads of state, um, general assemblies for the UN. They they are are they do a lot of work to prepare. They do a lot to get intelligence to allow them to have a formidable uh, a formidable pushback against any kind of individuals or entities that want to cause harm to New York City or its residents. Mr. Taylor, as you know. There are millions of people out there right now that say, if I get a speeding ticket and I go into a courtroom in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Tampa, Florida, et cetera, and I say anything remotely near what the former president has said, I will be thrown behind bars. We are a nation that says no man is above the law, but leading up to this trial, a lot of people are saying that does not seem to be the case. I believe that the criminal justice system is extending every single option available given this individual's, the former president's status as being a former president, being a person who almost half the country voted for in the last election, and uh, understanding that uh, he has his own particular style of language and communication that is unique uh, pretty much for, for anyone, which is why the normal rules do not apply. However, the normal rules of preparation for any kinds of problems or issues around him going to court or the court hearings himself, that is the thing that uh, the NYPD is going to be focused on. Gerard, 30 seconds left. Michael Cohen went to jail. Um, his um, uh, accountant is in jail right now. Um, he's been sentenced to jail twice. Why is what is good for the goose not good for the gander in this case? 
we we don't yet know what is good for the gander in in short because he has not been convicted of anything yet uh, but ultimately the the difference right now is that these people to some extent confessed or admitted to having engaged in wrongdoing or they were proven to have engaged in wrongdoing based on clear evidence uh, and for that reason they were incarcerated they were also not at the top of the pyramid so there there is a different not the standard but a different process that needs to be followed because Donald Trump has not been tried yet once that happens i think we will see punishment commensurate with expectations that people be punished for their conduct. His former CFO, Alan Weisselberg. Uh, gentlemen, by the way, should I be arrested for a speeding ticket? I want you to represent me on the uh, law side. I want you to represent me on the order side. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us.